General purpose bipedal robots are incredibly expensive, and Skate aims to change that. While its software is still in its early stages and going perfectly well, Skate's mechanical hardware is intended to compete with his high-end robots, and I'll be sharing some of its design approaches. Skate's core philosophy has always been simple, maximize performance and versatility while minimizing complexity and cost. Similar to how aviation progressed, moving away from creating bipedal robots that closely mimic biology is crucial for optimizing cost and performance. When designing Skate or any legged robot, stability is a critical driving factor. Quadrupeds have an inherent advantage of being statically stable with four points of contact. But bipedal robots like Skate are statically stable only in the frontal plane. To maintain stability in the sagittal plane, ground contact points need to be positioned based on the desired acceleration. Many people like to compare this to an inverted pendulum. One of the simplest legged solutions for this is equivalent to a person on stilts. This is effectively a point contact leg with three degrees of freedom in the hip and one in the knee. For wheels, a Segway represents a simplest dynamically stable system with two points of contact. These two types of system achieve stability in almost the same way. So why choose wheels as Skate's primary means of locomotion? Well, they're more efficient, quieter, reduce total system wear, and enable higher speeds. When experiencing disturbances, wheels can rapidly relocate contact points without needing to lift an entire leg. Skate's wheels are designed for standard stair and ladder steps, and have sufficient torque to accelerate the robot at 1G for a short period of time. Even though wheels are the best solution for the majority of cases, legs excel in exceptionally challenging terrain and fall recovery. Combining the two gives the best of both worlds. When optimizing Skate's legs, the number of degrees of freedom was a major consideration. I mentioned earlier that people on stilts use four degrees of freedom to balance, However, the minimum required for positioning an endpoint in a volume is 3 degrees of freedom. This is what Skate's leg uses to reduce complexity, cost, points of failure, and weight. A 2 degrees of freedom ankle, which is what humans have, is largely unnecessary for a point contact, and the functionality of a 3 degrees of freedom hip can be replaced by differentially driving the wheels. On the other hand, decreasing to a 2 degrees of freedom leg would constrain the foot's movement to a plane which significantly limits versatility. Being made out of FDM plastic, repairability was a big focus for Skate. Its actuators and legs use identical modular parts, so most of Skate's repairs take 30 minutes and a few dollars. Luckily, the safety harness has kept me from needing to replace any of Skate's parts or a wall for now. Its two kilo leg is 33% lighter than an average human arm and can fold up into a very compact form. The total weight of Skate, excluding the batteries, is 13 kilos. Combined with a knee and hip flexion joints capable of 45 newton meters and a peak of 80 newton meters, Skate is one of the lightest and highest performance bipedal robots for its weight. Much like most other robots, Skate's software currently uses the more predictable classical control approach. I see the future of robotics to utilize reinforcement learning, and this is what I'll be pivoting towards. Skate isn't available yet, but if you'd like to build any robot similar in size, its actuators are currently unparalleled in value, and I intend to keep it that way to the best of my ability. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.